Hello and good morning, Arion. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing well. I just want to say you've got such a cool name. <laughs> well, it's not a Disney name, but it is a radio-created name because, you know, in radio, we're trying to do everything we can to, to be noticed. But the problem is, though, program directors didn't like it because they thought, are you saying Earl, Errol, Harold? What's your name again? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm looking at it written down. It looks so cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of, awesome. speaking of cool, this book, I first of all, you got to understand that for the past year and a half, I've been collecting everything Disney 100. And so when this book arrived, I was a kid in a candy store. I was like, no, this is amazing. (laughs) What are some of your favorite facts in it? Well, one of of my things, first of all, I did not know that Snow White uh, is the only Disney princess that has a star. When I I came across that, I'm going, well, of course she does. Of course she does. She has to. But but it it was such a shock because I didn't realize that animation could have its own star. Yeah, isn't that incredible? There, there's so many facts in this book. You know, as we were putting this together, we, the, you know, we. I'll give you an example. Like what, our photo editor for the book, she's a huge fan of Disney, and so even she was like discovering things that are that are totally new. And you know, we thought that you know because fans of Disney, they know Disney in and out, and yeah. so we were like, oh, is it going to be really hard to put together 300 wow worthy facts? You know, um, that that people don't already know. And we were so shocked that, no, like there's so much content. Disney's been around for so long. They've created so many movies and they've got the parks and everything. And there are all these little hidden things in the parks. I mean, we we were shocked at how much information, like how many nuggets of information were totally wow worthy that surprised all of us. Um, And, you know, I feel like there's enough content to even make like a weird but true Disney too, (laughs) because there's just so much wow worthy stuff. (laughs) Well, one thing that is not hidden in the park is in Dubai, and that is that six-story tall Mickey Mouse. Yeah, there there are so many things that are even around the world. Uh, you know, I think, you know, if a kid wanted to bring this book with them to, like, one of the Disney parks, I think they'd have a really great time just finding the little nuggets of information, just finding the real the real life thing that we're talking about in the book. You know, for example... Um, I don't know if people know this, but there are manatees at Epcot at the Nemo and Seas exhibit, really? and they eat about a hundred heads of lettuce a day. <laughs> so you could actually go there, see the manatees, um, look at them from above. They're just bobbing in the water, and you can, you know, if you happen to be there while the keepers are feeding them, you'll probably see them bobbing around among, you know, tons of heads of lettuce, and they're just slowly munching on them and we've got facts like that in there um and a you know a beautiful image of a manatee it's there are just so many cool things and just so many things where i was like oh yeah i forgot there are animals at epcot and you know obviously there's you know uh, animal kingdom as well there are tons of facts in here about that so there really was like a an, an organic partnership with disney and national geographic kids now, one thing that I didn't see in this one, but man, I, I wish you would do it in the next one, is that I just learned recently that Disney wanted to have a winter wonder park in California, but couldn't go through it because uh, people were protesting it. And I thought, wow, that would still be so much fun to have a place where I can go skiing with the mouse. <laughs> well, well, I'll bring it up at our next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be, Maybe we can make it happen. <laughs> I, I'm a daily writer, so so when, when you bring up subjects such as pencils or anything that has to do with even doodling, 70,000 pencils were used to for the artwork of Hunchback. Oh, my God. I mean, it, that just blows me away. Oh, my goodness. And there's another fact in the book that the animated dogs in 101 Dalmatians sport a total of... Oh my gosh, over 6 million spots. Wow. Um, and I think it just goes to show like the incredible lengths these animators have gone to and go to to get every scene just right and to to you know make everything just so beautiful and so realistic. You know, another another fact in the book is about how the creators, the filmmakers of Frozen, they actually met with a NASA scientist who's nicknamed Dr. Snow <laughs> to learn how snowflakes form so it's not even just to look at snowflakes so that they could copy them for the scenes i mean they wanted to know how they actually form Mm -hmm. and and to me that just shows the incredible lengths to which these creators go to to make everything seem super realistic look at what they did with nemo they actually took up scuba lessons yes exactly and 
poor them, um, the filmmakers of um, of Ratatouille, they had to actually create and eat all the delicious <laughs> recipes that are in that movie. <laughs> now, one of the most famous sidekicks ever has always been Donald, Donald Duck. I mean, not only does he have a, an asteroid named after him, but I just learned because of your book that his middle name is Fauntleroy? Yeah. Yes, he has a middle name and you know, I don't know if others know this, but there you know, there are three um if you go to Haunted Mansion, there are three ghosts that you know, as you go through the ride, you'll see they're trying to like they're trying to hitchhike. They're they're just, you know, trying to hitch a ride as you go through and they actually have names as well. Um it, which is really interesting to me. Parents need to understand this book. First of all, it's for every age group. But I think one of the most, one of the greatest decisions you guys did in this book was to put a a section in there about the Liberty Bell. That even though it is a replica, that but but it's still from the same cast. I mean, and that to me is very special because man, I was here in 1976 when we celebrated the 200th anniversary, and that bell was on the Freedom Train. So when I saw that, that really warmed my heart. Yeah, you know, it's it's amazing. There, there. There's so much um, planning and so many details that went into the Disney parks. And that was something that, you know, we on the Nat Geo Kids side, we, we uncovered as we were putting this book together. And, you know, I think a lot of people, they go through the parks and some of them may be aware of this and some of them may not be. But, um, you know, the fact you're referencing the replica of the Liberty Bell in Liberty Square at the Magic Kingdom was yeah. built from the same cast as the original. Um, you know, and there, there really are just like these nods to to actual, to, to real American history. Um, and, you know, there's another fact in the book. Um, I don't know if I can find it, but but it's it's about um, the lanterns in, I think, Liberty Square. Like, there are 13 of them to represent the original 13 colonies. Um, so, you know, there are these little nods to to American history um, throughout the parks, and, and it's just, you know, incredible how much planning went into all of them. Now, because you've teamed up with National Geo, is there a website where, where readers can go? Because, you know, they're going to go through this book, and then they're going to want more, 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 more. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, kids can definitely, you know, with with their parents, they can definitely go to kids.nationalgeographic.com. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, if they want to get a copy of the book, they're also welcome to go to, you know, their favorite local bookstore. Um, you know, this book is also available, you know, at Barnes & Noble and Amazon and wherever books are sold. Um, you know, I, I will say, you know, the beauty of Weird But True is that the facts are short. I mean, yes. they're they're... They're just like single sentence, maybe two sentences, and they're just those short, pithy facts that are just meant to to ignite this little spark in yep. a kid's or anyone's brain and just have you go, wait, what? Yep. So I think they're really, <laughs> the formula is kind of like, some of these do sort of beg for a little more explanation, but our, our goal is just to get kids kind of, you know, curious about the world around them and to, to really share the magic of the world around them. Um, you know, and bring it right to their fingertips. And I think that this series, that's one of the reasons the series is so great. So true, so true. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Will you be brilliant today, okay? Thank you so much.